Hello Internet audience, my name is Paul Kanyuk, and I'm going to show you guys how to set up projections in RenderMan for Maya. This is in response to a question I got after my last set of tutorials that I posted. Um, I had given a lecture on pattern generation at Pixar and I alluded to our use of coordinate systems for projecting textures on objects that may or may not have UVs. And um, you know, some watcher sent in a question asking about how to set that up different depending on whether you're using Maya, Katana, Houdini, etc. Um, but I'll show you guys how to set it up in Maya. Alright, so let's uh, let's begin somewhere. I'm going to start an IPR render of the scene and let's look at what we're starting with. So this is just a scene with a very general uh, shader based on geometry and driven detail. This is usually where I start with. I've got a brick layer here that has color and bump coming from a rounded cube mapping which projects textures along three axes and they are sharing a rounded cube manifold so the bump and the color always line up. Uh, the more interesting bit is this dirt layer. Um, the dirt layer, uh, the color is pretty boring. It's just a uniform color and here I'll show you guys. This is live. Look at all that dirt. Um, but the pattern's really interesting. Uh, in that we're getting uh, our color from these PXR dirt nodes. This is uh, occlusion. This is um, a curvature node. That's because of whether the direction is set to inside or outside. We have a facing ratio here for whether the objects face up and then a fractal for just overall noisiness. Those are all combined together with PXR mix nodes and then in the, we have finally a remap so you can do some overall color correction. Let's say we want generally more dirt. We're going to bias the opacity up and check it out. More dirt. Yay. Alright, so that's what we're starting with. That's not what this lecture is about. If you want more detail on how I set this up, uh, see my other tutorials on terrain shading. It's pretty much the same stuff. Really what we're going to focus on is graffiti. How do we add projections uh, into the scene? So. Um, First thing we need to do is create some coordinate systems to use. Uh, now you can't create coordinate systems while the IPR render is going. We've got to stop that. Basically the IPR render only looks at the scene as it is when you hit it. Any new geometry won't be picked up and coordinate systems are a type of geometry. You can create them by uh, hitting tab and creating a place 3D texture node. Um, now this is not a shading node. This is uh, very simply a um, uh, looks like that didn't get created. Let's try it again. Place 3D texture. There we go. Okay, so it's this is not a shading node. This is a piece of geometry in the scene that just represents a coordinate system. I'm going to call it Graffiti A, and maybe I'll create uh, three of these, A, B, and C. Um, and we'll have uh, three pieces of graffiti, probably on this wall. That wall's just asking for graffiti right now. All right, so now that we have those nodes, uh, we should go ahead and uh, maybe rig up uh, how to project them onto the surface. So I'm going to create a PXR projection stack. Projection stack is um, simply a node that collects and layers a bunch of uh, projected textures. Um, you can add layers by hitting that plus button, but let's just start with a single layer. I'm going to wire this up by going to results RGB, connecting that to the diffuse color of our graffiti. Now for opacity, we actually have to go to the layer mixer itself. Note that the layer graf the uh, graffiti is going to layer one, so you're going to want to connect the opacity to layer one mask. So I'm going to connect the result A of the projection stack to layer one mask. Lovely. Um, now uh, we need to connect uh, color and opacity to this layer. Uh, we can use a PXR projection layer node, which is pretty much just a 2D texture that has the projection uh, logic built into it. Um, and I'm going to connect the result RGB of the projection layer to the layer RGB of the projection stack, or attempt to. Let's try that again. Cool. Oh yeah, you got to expand this because you can actually have multiple. Uh, this is an array of RGB values, an array of uh, layers. Similarly, let's get the result A and connect it to uh, layer A0 alpha. All right, so we're getting there. Now we need a file. Um, it's going to be slightly interesting uh, how we set this up, so pay attention. I'm going to show you how to do it wrong first and, um, and then uh, how to correct it. 
So let's just do what we would normally do, which is uh, find our favorite texture. This is a great piece of graffiti, Graffiti 43, and load that there. Now to hook it up to the coordinate system, oh, well first let's put the coordinate system somewhere that will likely uh, project onto that surface. So um, where is that coordinate system? So find our translate widget. Oh, it's at the origin. That is where new nodes tend to be. So uh, basically I just sort of bring it up, scale it, and I usually use that grid as a proxy for where I think the projection will happen. It's, you know, it's a little bit fuzzy um, where, the, where the detail is in your texture, but I'm just gonna set it up and sort of put that grid right against the wall. That looks like a great place for some graffiti. And because graffiti artists, you know, sometimes don't have the most ideal conditions when they're painting, I'm gonna tilt it a little. Uh, a little bit of nuance there. Okay, so that's Graffiti A. How do we connect Graffiti A up to that projection layer? We create a PXR Manifold 3D node, the same node we use to uh, connect to fractals and other 3D textures, and then we give it a coordinate system called, uh, well, just same name as the uh, Place 3D Texture node, which is Graffiti A. You might think, why is it 3D? I mean, it's a, we're doing a 2D projection. Well, that's what the projection layer is. It throws away whatever axis you're projecting along. So it turns a 3D manifold into a 2D manifold in the projection layer. So we're gonna connect the results to the projection layer. And in theory, that will work, maybe. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that our layer one is enabled. It is, oh, that's our dirt uh, layer one, aha. Make sure to enable your layer. And now let's do a IPR render and see what we've done. Oh my goodness, we got graffiti everywhere. I mean, that's kind of cool, but that's not what we want. So this is what I meant when I said that I was going to uh, show you how to do it wrong first before how to do it right. The problem is that when we went to the um, uh, projection layer, we just loaded a normal TIFF like we would normally do. Now RenderMan cannot read TIFF files directly, it converts them to a format called TEX, which is optimized for reading from. And that conversion program can take a number of arguments uh, that control how a texture tiles and how the boundary conditions work, as well as other things like, you know, floating point precision versus 8-bit and 16-bit and so on. Um, however, it, uh, RenderMan just guesses for the most part, or RenderMan for Maya rather, guesses most people really want their textures to tile. And that is what happens by default when you just load in a TIFF file here. Um, since instead of tiling, we want um, what's called a, a periodic mode of black, where um, we basically have zero alpha, zero color um, beyond the, the uh, texture. Um, we're going to have to, instead of uh, just passing the TIFF, do our own texture conversion. Now, there just so happens to be a tool for that. Uh, I believe it is the texture manager, maybe. All right, and we can either pick a directory or an image and do a conversion on those. So I'm gonna just pick a single image for now. I'm gonna pick that uh, texture 43. And now we can control, this is the normal settings. Normally the texture mode is periodic, which means it's gonna tile. Clamp means you just pick whatever the color is at the boundary and you extend it indefinitely or black means, again, zero RGB, zero alpha, which is what we want. So I'm just gonna click OK, and we're going to get the text equivalent. Now I just so happen to have done this on all the graffiti, so when I open this up under graffiti, you'll see a, a text file for every TIFF. That's what would happen if you pick the whole directory, but for now, I'm just gonna, you know, this is the one I believe we just created, graffiti43.txt, uh, click Open, and now, if we hit render, hopefully we only get one of these bits of graffiti. Cool, and there it is. Now it's not exactly where I thought it would show up, but one cool thing is once the coordinate system's created, any uh, translation on it stays live. So I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe give it more of a positive X translation. Moving it over, maybe move it down a bit. And maybe I want that piece of graffiti to be a little bigger. Let's uh, give it a scale of three. Nice, that's looking cool. All right, so um, that's the basics of setting up a projection. 
from here on, I'll just show you how to add more layers, which shouldn't be too bad, but there, there's some subtleties there. So uh, to add, so I'm going to cancel this for now. Um, to add a new layer, um, it's as simple as creating a, well, few things to it. First, we got to create a new layer here. Now, I believe the projection stack node kind of has a UI bug. You hit plus and, oh, I see something. Sometimes you don't see an extra layer there. If that's the case, have no fear. Click off and click on again. And if it didn't refresh, you might see the new layer there. But the important thing is not so much what you see in this UI, but the extra parameters. You'll see that we now have an extra layer RGB and an extra layer alpha. All right, so um, also what I'm going to do just to make it easier is I'm going to delete these and I'm going to create, um, now that we roughly know where to put graffiti, I'm just going to duplicate that and call them B and C. All right, so uh, layer B, I'm just going to maybe move up a little bit and offset slightly. Maybe move to the right. We'll see. I'm just going to move it somewhere else so that we know it's distinct. And then C, I'm just going to raise it up a bit, tilt it a different direction. Cool. All right, so we have some graffiti set up. Now let's take a look at our layers. So on the projection layer, this will be a little bit of a review. Uh, let's grab our favorite texture. Then rather than watch, you know, have you watch me do the conversion again, you see we already have text files here. Ah, oh, there we go. I like graffiti 46 is pretty cool. So I'm going to grab the corresponding text file. And oh, it looks like I just did that in our existing layer. I did not create a new one, so let me turn that back to 43. What we need to do is create a PXR projection layer node, another one. This will be a little bit of a review. Let's grab Graffiti 46. Boom. Uh, let's wire the RGB up to layer 1 and the alpha up to um, the alpha of layer one. And it's a uh, zero indexed, so the first layer is zero, second layer is one, and so on. Tell uh, computer scientists how to hand in designing this UI. All right, manifold, uh, 3D. Um, again, name of our coordinate system, graffiti B. Take the result of that, wire that into our projection layer. And uh, it's about as exciting as that. I mean, I think we're getting close to the end of the demo, so I'm gonna just uh, hit that IPR render, and we'll now have an, uh, another piece of graffiti. Now, it looks like that graffiti is upside down, so let's go ahead and grab that and maybe rotate it around, uh, what's it, the x-axis by 180? All right, cool. Uh, note that it is stretching on the ground. Um, one could potentially consider that a feature because you know we don't want the projection to clip along the ground so a stretch in a way is less you know gives you a heads up that your projections misaligned but let's say you just want to get rid of the stretching you could simply use a facing ratio uh, against the direction you're projecting along and multiply the alpha with that so you, you can fix the stretching but in general that indicates there's a this is a misalignment anyway so I'll leave that. Right. I'm just nudging this to the right. And you can see that the layer order makes a difference. That piece of graffiti is on top of this piece of graffiti. Let me nudge it a little left just to make that obvious. And so on. So that's pretty much how to set up um, uh, projections using coordinate systems. And again, this had nothing to do with the UVs of the object. Basically, it just had to do where these projections are. Now, this might be a little too granular for every piece of graffiti in a set this large to have a different projection. You know, I might consider whole walls worth of graffiti, you know, or stuff on the ground to be things you might want to project. Um, because there is a cost to doing this. Every one of those projection layers, another texture you're reading, um, the renderer is usually pretty quick with this kind of thing. So you, you can use quite a few, but just remember there's a cost. So, you know, three to four, ten projections might be cool, but if you start using hundreds of projections, you're, you might want to think about uh, having fewer of them in larger textures, potentially. But uh, again, it's pretty cool because, you know, it's really one shader and we're just adding. Uh, another tip is you might want to set up like eight or nine or ten projection layers already wired into here and have that as a network ready to go so that, you know, anytime you're shading something new, you have ten 
projection layer set up because it is a little tedious to uh, wire this together. Anyway, uh, that's a little tip um, on how to do this. At some point, maybe I'll try to show you guys how to do this in RenderMan for Katana because really you can do this in many packages, um, not just Maya. But anyway, uh, that's all for now. Thanks so much. Bye.